So Richard, this is the air conditioning unit. Alrighty, let's see what you got. Gas fired furnace for heating right here. You've got the return comes back from the building right here, comes up through the furnace as a blower that's going to push it through the furnace to be heated, but the air can also come across this box right here for cooling. There's a cooling coil here. The air goes up into this box at the top called a plenum, and right here are the supply ducts that go out to all the individual registers. That's how it's supposed to work. What's going on with yours? Well, during the summertime, I turn it on, and the system runs for about an hour, okay. and then it stops working. So I come down here to check it out, yeah. and I notice that this is all frozen up. Okay, that's actually starting to form ice right now. So that's on the line sets that go to outside, and I imagine on the coil too. All right, so what do you do, anything? I actually turn on the heat for about five minutes. You turn on the heat to get air conditioning? What happens then? Well, it melts the coil inside of here, but the problem with that is I get water all over my basement floor. And what do you get, another hour cooling and then you freeze again? Yep. All right. So anytime I hear about this condition, a frozen coil, first and foremost, I think about a lack of airflow through the unit. So here's the return air. And on anybody's furnace or AC unit, there's got to be some sort of filter like this. So this is a return air filter. And this thing is relatively simple, but it's got to be clean. Now, that doesn't perfectly clean, but it's not terrible. You change this? All the time. OK. So if it's not something simple, like the return air filter clogged, you've got to look at some other things and do a deeper evaluation. I want to check the ducts, the size and number of these ducts, and also what you have for equipment. All right, let me show you what I found. Wow. You were not kidding about a frozen coil. This is just a big block of ice. This is called an evaporator coil. They also called it an A coil because of its shape. So air is blown across and through this coil. Now this, you can see the coils right here, and there's also fins in here that the air blows across. The coils are filled with refrigerant. So now when the warm air goes across, any heat that's in the air gets absorbed in the refrigerant that's inside of these coils right here and it gets transferred through this line right here to outside. It goes through the compressor outside and through the outdoor condenser, and now it comes back really cold right here, and in your case, it's way too cold. And now it's freezing this whole coil. Once this thing freezes, no longer can that air even get through those fins, and exactly what happened to you will happen. So what would cause this? Well, I think I know what the answer is, but let's check one more thing outside. So the other part of your air conditioning system is out here, the condenser. Now you remember there was those refrigerant lines that we capture the heat, bring it out to here, and then with this fan we dump the heat to outside. Now we always measure air conditioning equipment in terms of tons. Tons, that sounds heavy. Well, it's not actually a unit of weight, it's a unit of energy. Now it goes back a long time. There was a time in this country that the way we conditioned a building or stored food uh, safely was with ice. Every local town would have an ice house that stored ice all through the year. And what it was, was a measure of how much cooling power could you get out of, what, 2,000 pounds, a ton of ice. Now, the modern refrigeration industry borrowed that term. And nowadays, we think in terms of 12,000 BTUs is a ton of cooling. All right, so let's see what you got here. You have a four-ton system. Four tons, is that a lot? Well, the amount of cooling power you need is a function of the load of the building, and there's some variables. How much insulation is inside the walls? What type of windows? Are there storm windows? How big is the building? And where's the building? How hot does it get on the hottest day of the year? I will tell you a rule of thumb for me around here with a building like this, I would expect to see a ton of cooling needed for every 500 to 600 square feet. Now, how big is this house? Wow, mine's only 1,300. So 1,300, there's a chance we needed only like a two and a half ton and this is a four. Now, you ordered the system originally, right? Yeah, the guy that put it in said it would be plenty big. Plenty big. We hear this all the time. Oversizing is one of the biggest issues in air conditioning because if you're too big, it just doesn't work. It'll freeze up like yours did. We want to make sure the size of this unit is just right for the hottest day of the year and no more. And in this case, we're way too big. Well, then what should we do? Well, we could put an addition on, about 1,500 square foot addition on the back. I think the wife would like that. <laughs> We got to think about what we can do today, and I think today what we got to do is make this equipment go away and put the right size stuff in. And that's a pretty big job. When you're working with air conditioning, you have to deal with refrigerant. 
Now, refrigerant is sometimes a liquid, sometimes it's a gas. What you never want to do, though, is to release it to atmosphere. So you always have to be a licensed refrigeration technician to work with it. And that's what Keith is. Hey, Keith. How you doing, Rich? Thanks for helping us. Not a problem. So what have you done so far? Uh, so far, what we're doing is recovering all this refrigerant out of this particular unit using a recovery machine. So sort of a giant vacuum pump? Exactly. And then afterwards, it gets uh, stored into this recovery cylinder. How long will it take to suck all the refrigerant out of this condenser into that canister? Out of this particular unit, 20 minutes to a half hour, or until both of these gauges are at zero. Pressure gauges. All right. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. With all the refrigerant gone, we can now remove the old unit. Keith will cut the copper line sets, disconnect the electrical, and remove the old unit. Here's our new three-ton condenser. Great. Down. All right, let's just slide this on. All right, with that in place, now we just have to remake our connections. All right, we got the connections made on your new condenser outside. Now we have to think about inside here. We got to get rid of this old coil and put a new one in. And the important thing is that this has to be the same size tonnage as the outdoor, three ton, three ton. So this is your new evaporator coil right here. And it's going to start by getting the old lines cut away so we can get rid of the old coil. Good. All right, so now with the lines cut, we just got to do whatever we got to do to get rid of this connection right here. All right, good. Why don't you come right to here? Let's see if we can muscle this out of the way. Be careful, there's sharp edges on this metal, okay? Wait, careful, work, work with me. Okay, I got it. You stay clear, it's sharp, I'll drop it right down. Bye bye, four ton. All right, so let's get this one into position. All right, so come here. So now we're gonna actually turn this thing, whoops. Good. Okay, let me just check that. All right, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit and I just wanna come just a little bit. Push. Good. There we go. Good, awesome. All right, now we just gotta reconnect the ductwork. Sharp edges. Down we come. Let me just pry this out a little tiny bit. Now we just need to cut a nice little piece of sheet metal to seal it up tight, and we'll be good. Keith is brazing the copper connections to the line sets. Brazing is a lot like soldering, but it can take the extraordinary pressures that come with refrigeration. So Tim, we've been busy down here. We've got the new coil secured to the furnace with sheet metal screws at the bottom okay. and at the top all the way around. We've sealed it really well with this foil tape with a sealant on the back. We want to make sure there's no air that leaks out into the room. Nice. Okay. Here's the line sets, the new line sets connected. They've been brazed and then the suction line, the line that gets colder has actually been insulated so it doesn't drip anything on the floor. Right here you can see the PVC connection to the condensate drain, which is right down at the bottom. Anytime we air condition, the air comes by that coil and we make the air cold, but one of the byproducts is all the humidity has to have a place to go, and it turns into what they call condensate. Okay. It comes down through here, through a trap, down into this reservoir right here. There's a little float in there. When the, float, the water level rises, the float comes on, brings on a pump, and sends that water out to the drain over there. 
Now it runs on 110 volts, and Keith, you were working on that, right? Yeah, everything's all tied in over here. Good. So how do we get the right amount of refrigerant into this new system? Well, the new condensers that we install now, they all come pre-charged up to 25 feet of line set. And that's about what we have. So there's enough refrigerant in to cover our system perfectly without adding any more. That's exactly right. right. Uh, what I had to do, I had to evacuate the lines. Then after they're evacuated, all I have to do is just open up the lines on the condenser and it's pre-charged. Right, so we're good to go? That's it. All right, we'll get flip on the switch. Here we go. That's sounds, a good sound, isn't it? It sounds good. That's a good sound.